93.7 WMMS. Nineteen seventy six. Brand new song here from Bad Cult Kiss. One of the songs that Peter Chris, Kiss drummer, sang, Hard Luck Woman. The song's been um covered a bunch of times. If it sounds very much like a Rod Stewart song, that is not by accident. Paul Stanley had written it for Rod Stewart. But they had a huge hit with Peter Chris singing Beth. And so they were like, well, maybe we can follow it up. And so Peter Chris sang Hard Luck Woman. And I think it, it did okay. Beth really blew up. But uh, Hard Luck Woman is one of um, Kiss's kind of mellowest songs. But it does sound very much. And, and Peter Chris's voice was very reminiscent of Rod Stewart, too. Anyway, I was thinking of Hard Luck Woman, though, because, you know, we were talking about how they are trying to or they are going to criminalize drag shows in the state of Tennessee. And uh, wouldn't you know it, because it's always projection over on that side, that a, a photo from the 70s has popped up of the Tennessee governor in drag. And <laughs> about the same time this song came out, 1977. Bill Lee is the current governor of uh, Tennessee. And, of course, very, very, he's laser-focused on the important things there in the state of Tennessee, like outlawing drag shows. And so somebody dug up a photo of him from a high school yearbook of him in drag. It was Franklin High Yearbook 1977. And the caption is, Hard Luck Woman. Just like the Kiss song. And so that picture got passed around. I mean, if you're that guy, uh, you go, I, I don't know what you say. You go, all right, whatever. I mean, trying to outlaw, I don't know how you fight with, you're not going to use logic to thrust and parry with somebody who's trying to do something as stupid as making drag shows illegal. It's not like there's a rational thought behind that. So it's not like a big gotcha to go, hey, look at this photo of him 40 years ago. Clearly, he wanted nothing to do with it now. There's no, it's not like this guy's going to go, gee, I've thought better of my position on this. Mm -hmm. And given this indication of, you know, it's a mis it's going to be a misdemeanor there in uh, Tennessee. Maximum sentence of 11 months and uh, 29 days in prison. You could get a fine, too. Additional violations will be felonies. So is that up to six years in prison going into effect? Yeah, he's going to sign it into law. Oh, Jesus. Yep, they're in um, That's so ridiculous. Tennessee. So. But again, this is a guy. This isn't the first yearbook photo of the guy that's popped up. He went to Auburn University, my father's alma mater. And it was a photo of him uh, in the Auburn University yearbook photo in a Confederate uniform, which again, it's Alabama. Right. That, I don't know if anybody's gasping at somebody in the 80s or late right. 70s in a Confederate. There's still people there in 2023 who cream their jeans over Confederate uniforms. So other than uh, kind of making the rounds in the news cycle, it's not going to change anything. But it is uh, kind of underscores the point that people who are zeroing in on this kind of culture war stuff. Uh, it's usually some form of projection. I do like the, <laughs> I do like the caption "Hard Luck Woman." Though I'm not sure. Maybe there was, uh, maybe it was because of the Kiss song. Would have been about that time. Garth Brooks does a great uh, cover of "Hard Luck Woman." Did it for a Kiss tribute album about 20 years ago. Did a good uh, version of that. Um, hey, are you ready for some hot celebrity goss? Let's do it. I forgot to tell people that Perez Bilton was going to be making his way in here. 
And uh, frankly, I don't want to wait one second more. So. Yeah. Yeah. This is Hot Celebrity Gossip with Perez Bilton. Ooh. Oh, what's up, Goss Guzzlers? I got some hot goss for you today. Uh, Sean Mendez, who uh, is one of Pound Cake's favorite Right? You love mm, him, right? He loves Sean Mendez. Yes. And uh, he's he's been spotted walking next to Sabrina Carpenter. Who's that? She's a pop star, okay. I guess. I never heard of her before this article, but <laughs> uh, they were spotted walking together, which in the world of Hollywood gossip means they're dating. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mendez made headlines last year when he canceled his tour due to mental health reasons. I think just before he canceled the tour, Camila Cabello broke up with him. And then there was rumors that he was dating his hot therapist. Oh, his so, chiropractor, yeah. Chiropractor, yeah. And um, according to Inside Sources. Inside Sources. Mendez is still focusing on his mental health, which is under constant attack by having an extreme amount of success and beautiful women constantly throwing themselves at him. Mm-hmm. Light, a, light a candle for this young <laughs> mush-brained king. <laughs> <laughs> Mush brained. <laughs> All right. Inside sources. Uh, Brad Pitt's got a new lady. Uh, her name is Inez de Ramon. Oh. And uh, they they think this could be it. They they think they might just end up together for a long term relationship. And according to inside sources. Inside sources. Inez, who works in the world of high end jewelry. So a different kind of gold digger is excited about their romance and sees it leading to marriage and then eventually a rather substantial divorce settlement. Every girl's dream. Mm-hmm. Modern inside sources. Modern romance is divine. It's just it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. And uh, one of the thousand pound sisters is getting a divorce. Amy, what's their last name? Pound cake. You watch this show, right? I don't know their last names. Okay. Well, Amy. I think she's the smaller of the sisters, said her husband, Michael, is lazy and doesn't help with their two kids. Amy has already moved out and plans on filing paperwork in the near future. According to Inside Sources, Inside Sources, we're doomed as a species. Uh, This show should have never been made. We should have never uh, made the Learning Channel into the free show that it is. Uh, The fat sister... The Fat Sister Show wasn't the nail in the coffin. It's just the dirt filling up the grave of humanity. We are done for. That's all. Hmm. That's all. Yeah, that's... I was like ending on a high note. Yeah. This is Hot Celebrity Gossip with Perez Bilton. What I don't understand is when you get a show like Thousand Pound Sisters... There is no shortage of severely overweight siblings and family members. What makes these people unique? It's the personalities. But the, I'm, again, there's a lot of sassy fat people walking around. I, I don't know. I can't believe these are shows that people watch. I can't believe but it's so that they've been made. It's is so- it interesting? It sounds <laughs> just like bickering. Probably sit around and cook some soups and eat bread and desserts and just get all fat and sassy. The, the one girl was arguing with the other sister. She's like, she's lazy. You're like, you're lazy. You don't do nothing. And she's like, you don't do nothing. She's like, what you talking about? Bitch, my bills are paid. All my bills paid. Well, <laughs> like, it's sad well, because never like. Never mind. It sounds like a great show. Oh, it's great. But her bills are paid because. They're doing the show. Yeah. Well, I don't know I what mean, they were doing before. No, I Well, they weren't making money. One of them was like a cam girl. Like they, That's what I'm saying, though. I mean. Cameron eat. Right, because there's a market for that, too. But, you know, these families that are like, I mean, they're ripe for the picking where they're like a a network comes in and goes, we'll give you money. And they're not getting rich. But I mean, if you're making a few thousand dollars an episode, that's a hell of a lot more money than you had before. Right. And so they're not going to turn it down. They're like, how the hell else are we going to monetize being super fat? And yeah. Oh, God. So you can't blame anybody who, um, they understand the mechanism. They know they're going to be on a show that people are going to mock them and, you know, but they're like, well, we're making money. I mean, I mean, when I'm searching for hot celebrity gossip, the top tier celebrities have things pretty buttoned up these days. 
all the real gossip is happening with reality show stars because they are inside sources way looser with it but it it's so that that's a very deep pool and i don't think everybody knows who like i don't think anybody cares about this divorce that's coming up I don't think it's... Yeah, somebody texted me, they only get five grand an episode. Yeah. Only five grand? But These it, people weren't going to see five grand in any, you know, so... But an episode, we know how, I mean, you know how reality... But how many work. episodes a season? I, Probably I, 10 to 12, right? Yes. That's a lot of money. Yes, but it might be a week's worth of, or a month's worth of filming, and you get five grand for that. That's not that much. No, you get per episode Per that episode. Airs. You work for a month, they follow you around for a month, and you get 50 grand? That's not bad. I mean, there's people that have, like, regular, you know, lives and jobs that would jump at that. I'm saying, how long does it take? Isn't it, like, 100 hours or something to make a 60-minute uh, show? I'm trying to think of, like, what I learned in broadcasting school. It takes, like, 100 hours, at least 100 hours of filming to get one hour show. But this is reality TV. This isn't Still. the same format for filming. Okay. Well, that's what I learned. Alan, I'm not sure if you know this, but a Halloween costume isn't drag. The governor of Tennessee wouldn't have made the law if mentally unstable people didn't want to shove their sexuality down children's throats. What a, explain uh, how that sexuality? You can't argue is with that logic. because. By the way, drag is literally cross dressing. So yes. a hollow, and I've dressed in drag. I'm a much more attractive woman than I am a man. You I've, didn't tuck though. I've right? gone in full drag. What's that? You tucked? I can't tuck this, homie. Yeah, into my sock. <laughs> hey oh, hey oh. It's not real drag unless you tuck. Oh, shut up! <laughs> it's I'm not real. Like... Dra- you and I have both dressed in drag, and I tucked. Yes, I thugged it out. Thugged it out, this guy. I would love this this texter to call and explain how they uh, well, see I had, this as I know sexuality. Where, I know where you're coming from. That's yeah. like a fifth grade. That's a very juvenile reading of what's going on there. Yes. But I mean, I so I understand. I understand where you're coming from. I disagree with you. But I mean, it's you know, it's very um, uh, antiquated way of looking at things, and also very ignorant, and also one of those things where. Uh, how about all the heterosexual normative things that we shove down children's throat? How about uh, grooming children to believe in God to hey. try and get them to, hey, dummy, you don't hmm. have to believe it. Do you only what, believe what, what it because you're doing? Do you only believe in God because your parents told you to or your mom told you to, Pancake? I mean, that's how I found out about it. I she didn't shove it down my throat because, I mean, we went to church. And then we didn't go to church. But so you I, feel like that you have a you you feel like in your life you have a personal relationship with a deity. Yeah, I have, and that guides yeah. your life. Yeah. In what capacity? Uh, it was because I was a Christian that I didn't. It, when I was struggling with the whole sexuality thing, I didn't. I I, I found prayer that I didn't commit suicide. I'm I'm just I'm not like that now. But I'm just saying it was a really dark time when in my late teens when I was struggling with coming out. And I was told that if you commit suicide, you know, it, it's, that's like the ultimate Yeah, but a lot sin. of people are also told that being gay is a sin in and of itself. So what? So those two things are in direct contrast with each other. You, you're kind of backed into a corner there if you feel like you're inherently sinful because you're gay, but you also can't take yourself out because then you'll go to hell or whatever nonsense. But they gay, do. but if we're going by the Bible, I don't think. Gay itself is a sin. It's the act of homosexuality, like just. Well, that's a distinction apart. without a difference. I don't think there's any mention of gay. You know, people love to twist what's actually in there, but if you, I don't think there's any mention of being gay in the Bible. Uh, I think there's. They don't mention homosexuality in the Bible. Again, no, they mention. I'm not well versed they, in the Bible. They, I'm not going to pretend like I am, but I. In the Bible, the only thing that's in there is uh, mentioning that you should not lay with a boy as you do your wife. And well, you should not lay with a man as you do. Probably your boy. Wife, something, but the Back actual then, probably boy. Right, but the actual translation is child. Yes. And then it's been you know translated into man or boy or whatever. But as an innate yeah. dimension of somebody's personality, that that was not something that was understood back then. That's mm-hmm. not something that was enumerated in the teachings and the gospels. I mean, you know, so people who are. Uh, religious in nature, at least from an 
organizational religion standpoint, they're going to foist that upon but, people because it's a way of controlling people. But it's got nothing to do with. But I you think know. you guys are generalizing religion because there. Of course, every religion basically comes from the same stories. But but what I'm saying is, you think all families are. If you say you're a Christian family, you have this preconceived notion that it's all by the Bible, it's all by the book all the time. I'm not saying that. But, but that's anybody what who was anybody saying. who like is anti anyone who is anti homosexual. Their origins are religious in nature. There's no one secular who's anti-homosexual. Um, that's I wouldn't necessarily say. That's, some people just don't like it. Some people just think it's that's like, different than being homophobic. It's c- entirely understandable for somebody to go, "I don't get it. It kind of grosses me out." But they're not trying to make your life difficult. Like I've never had a gay experience. I never um, experimented in college. Wow. Because it wasn't for me. I knew that wasn't for me. I have no problem with people doing it. I have zero problem if they, wh- who somebody loves, how they practice that, don't care. It just never, I knew, you know, some people are like, well, maybe. Well, That's great. I, I know for me, there was never, I had no interest in it. In my young 17-year-old adolescent brain was, I was picking the lesser of two evils. Like, I wanted at that point to end my life, or I was like, if you already feel like you're at the lowest point in your life, you might as well live it out and see what happens. What do you have to lose if that's the, if that's the case? The so, suicidal thoughts come from where? That you'll never, that the it, it the was, lack of conformity is going to be just a terrible life? I feel or, like I did. I feel like I, a, a lot of things were in it. I didn't feel like I fit in anywhere. Like my entire family is Baptist. They're all black. So I already automatically look different. I sound different. So it wasn't like a surprise that I came out as gay. I was like popping and locking to Britney Spears when I was like seven or eight, nine. Um, right, but so that's what that's what I'm saying. It was those it was, those roadblocks weren't secular in nature; they were religious in nature. But no, it, I'm just saying it, it was the religious aspect. It was I thought I was going to get married. I knew it, it's hard. That that's a big change to make when you come out of the closet. There really ain't no going back. And I didn't know if I was ready to make that choice at 17. I understand. Like, I had a picture. In my head of what my, I mean, I got tattoos. I was going to be a carpenter. Mm -hmm. Like, I was trying to do manly things. I really tried because I thought I was living my life the right way with the least amount of hassle. And that's, I didn't want a hard life. And being gay. Less hassle, more. Never mind. (laughs) (laughs) That's now. Now that I'm 30. Yeah. No, I I, figured it out. I get that too because I had a lot of those. I mean, I wasn't gay, but I just felt. uh, Trapped. Trapped by religion, never made me feel good. It always just made me feel like I had to give up the parts of my personality personality and, that and, made me feel the most like myself. Here's and so everything like the, you're doing wrong. Yeah, that's the difference between you and me, though. Like it, it was like I did feel comfort in religion. I felt at home, but it felt weird because that's, I, that's why I say spiritual and not religious because I understood the message. I understand the intent. But sometimes the deliverers are human too, and well, it's not the churches, but it's not the individuals that. There's aspects I'm of about. it that I it's I, spirituality. I appreciated, and but that's also what drove me more away from it was how they would talk about loving one another and being Christ-like, and then com- be the complete opposite of that when it came to certain situations. And I was just like, correct, that's, and that's that's and, what I and so with. the but the whole spirituality thing really came down to okay i feel you know more love for myself when i'm doing what i want and actually living by a code that i deem as you know a way to live my life with some honor and some you know love for other people but not just trying to do it for to try and fit but, and check these boxes for the religious aspect I, of it. Uh, but the, also, a lot of religion is based. I know we have to go to break, but I just feel like you, you don't feel like there's an afterlife. You don't believe in an afterlife. So I feel like that's why you want all of your stuff here in the now. Like, I am a spiritual person, so I feel like I live on after death. So also— But I, even I, if I did believe if in the—I I don't know if there's an afterlife or not, but I'm going to live my life in a way that is— uh, trying to treat other people the way I want to be treated. I made it I made it that simple for myself. Yeah, the flip side Just of that coin that is simple. the people who do believe in the afterlife, there's a lot of those people who treat people here terribly. Mm-hmm. They wipe their ass with the planet or whatever I'm because <laughs> Well, because they're like, none of this matters. It's all the great reward the after. Life. So it's yeah. 
Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Stop that. I got a break. If you want to text, 35192. I will have Mac basketball tickets for you on the way back. Want to get yourself some Mac basketball. It's back at the Romo Fijo Men's Championship session. It's going to be uh, next Saturday, March 11th. 35192 to text, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everyone.